I think I practice between five and eight hours a day usually. Okay. I asked David Cookerman what his ideal practice routine is, and he taught me through what his days looked like when he was still studying at the University of Music and Dance in Rotterdam. My challenge is to try and copy that for the next week and see what the appeal is of having a scheduled practice routine. So first, I need to see how it is that I'm going to break down my day. I had a fixed practice routine for the first half of the day. Huh? And then when it was uh, kind of lunchtime, I felt like I did my duties. And now when, if I feel inspired or if I have to prepare for a concert or um, just if I have free time, I can just continue to practice if I want to. But if not, it's okay. I have my four hours. And that, that was kind of the goal I set to do every day. All right, so here's what he told me. He starts his day at 8 a.m. with a morning run. He also does some push-ups or other exercise, showers, drinks, some water, etc., etc., and then begins his practice. He practices for two hours until 11 a.m. This is when he has breakfast. And then he starts again at around 11.30 with another two hours practice. So he finishes at around 1.30, 2 p.m. So here's what the details look like. He spends one and a half to two hours on isolated practice. This is when he's really diving into specific techniques, things that he needs to improve. He breaks them up into 15 minute chunks, different exercises, and keeps a track of how it's going. So he'll take a note of his BPM, um, how he's feeling, and he'll use different exercises to try and practice the same skill. The next one to one and a half hours are dedicated to integrating that practice. So he starts to put that into context of his grooves and other things that he's playing, but still really, really focusing on that technique. Then the final hour uh, is for noodling, improvising, composing. Then he can take a break, his structured practice is over, but he will still continue to rehearse, to work on other projects, and to play because he really enjoys practicing. He even referred to his instrument as his best friend um, and described how he loves spending time um, really getting to know it and connecting with it. So that's a lot of playing. I'm gonna need some tips <laughs> to be able to keep up with this. Do you have any tips for somebody who is just about to launch into that? Yeah, um, maybe be careful, like listen to your body. If, you, if your hands or wrists or fingers start to develop pain, really listen to that, or even the discomfort or tingling, whatever. I think it's it's great that you really want to jump into this, but it's also intense to go from zero to four hours if you don't have yet a regular practice routine. So that's something to keep in mind. There's different kinds of pain, right? There's, there's kind of sore muscles because you use muscles that you're not used to, mm -hmm. like going to the gym, for example. That's good. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But there's also pain in the joints or pain in the nerves, like tingling and weird stuff. And those things we should always listen to and um, not try to push through. One other thing maybe that can help is to set yourself up for success. Get rid of any obstacles that might convince you otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, like making the steps that you need to get into your daily routine as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. For example, prepare everything the evening before. Have your clothes ready for the run. Have your handpan set up in your practice area so you don't have to look for it. You don't have to clear up any space. Um, but everything is already set up for the, um, for the next day. So with all that in mind, I started preparing for the week ahead. To hold myself accountable, I committed to live streaming all four hours of every morning practice on Patreon. If you're interested in seeing what that looked like, you can check it out there. I'll leave a link below. So with all the plans in place, it's time for day one. I started my day a little bit late with a morning run at about 8.30, did my push-ups, had my shower, drank like three cups of water and was ready to go. I didn't actually get to the studio until 10 o'clock. So I wrote myself a little plan for the day and I jumped right in. So I've just done my first two hours and it actually felt pretty good. Um, I've never deliberately planned a practice session before. Um, but I've roughly followed David's structure. I gave myself three things to work on within the two hour block. It was really nice to see how I naturally ended up finding hurdles and getting stuck and needing to figure out ways that I can continue increasing the speed or getting a cleaner sound. And so I naturally would 
start to adapt my exercises and end up creating offshoot exercises or breaking it down into even smaller chunks. There were times when I could feel myself getting tired and I would end up dialing the metronome down again um, because I was actually getting worse. And then I realized, wait, this is probably a sign that I should just take a break, stretch, um, have a drink or whatever. Usually when I get to that stage, I just stop. Um, but because I knew I had to fill these two hours, I thought, okay, what can I do in order to make sure that I can carry on um, in a way that feels good? So that was really nice to have that like motivation to continue. So it was off to a really great start, but then... I managed an hour and a half before I had to stop. I feel tired. <laughs> My body feels tired. Um, but yeah, the first hour went by really, really quickly. It was really nice to just sit and play. I think that was has been my favourite part of the whole day, to swap scales and just explore and then start to implement some of the things I've been practising in the morning. And that felt really nice. I can really feel the progression already. But I am just knackered. <laughs> if I was going to keep this up every single day, something had to change. It's day two. I've done the usual morning stuff. I cheated a little bit, I had breakfast at 9, so I'm a little bit late to the studio, but I'm gonna try and change tactic, I think, this time. I think what I'm gonna do is actually finish at 2 o'clock, regardless of whether or not I've been successful in following David's structure. That way, I'm not overdoing it, I'm not like, I must do four hours, because um, he seemed pretty loose in the interview. So I'm gonna stop at 2, whatever happens, and then I can continue with my day, get my work done. And it worked. I played for an hour and a half, took a break, and then again for almost two. My improvisations were really starting to flow and by the end of the session, and I even wanted to carry on, but I decided not to. I'm starting to feel a little bit of pain in my left um, middle finger and ring finger, so I'm gonna take it steady. Um, I also think tomorrow I might skip my morning run. And it was like David read my mind because the next morning I received this message. I hope the practice routine is going well. I forgot one thing that um, can be helpful, especially when going from, from zero to a lot of practice, is to do stretching in between. I have uh, a video series of stretches that you can do just to avoid developing like wrist stuff that you don't want to have, like tendonitis and stuff. Uh, I sent you the link and let me know how it's going. Amazing. Thank you, David. The next couple of days went well and I did see a ton of progress in my playing, but it wasn't without his challenges. Distractions kept cropping up. Every morning I arrived late at the studio. I still wasn't hitting the four hour goal and I was barely playing in the afternoons or evenings besides to teach or film. I was struggling to fit in my own daily rituals now that my schedule had been flipped upside down. Simple things like food shopping or laundry. I usually do these things in the morning. And eventually it all caught up with me. It is the morning of day six. Uh, yesterday was a complete write-off. I arrived at the studio, I think, around 10. And I really tried for an hour to practice. But everything that I played just... It, I couldn't do what I could do yesterday, and I was feeling uninspired, and my brain wasn't working, I was really tired. And it just wasn't happening, and I felt like it was almost bad to be practicing in that state. I felt like I would somehow re <laughs> regress um, because I was, I, I wasn't playing well at all and it was disheartening. So I really tried, I stuck it out for an hour and then I just packed up and left and came home. Things improved from there. In those last two days, I felt my split hand ability start to settle. I learned three new grooves and different time signatures. I came up with a new video idea and practiced a bunch of scales exercises so I could film it, link in the description. I massively improved my trills and my sluggish left hand made some good progress in catching up. And that doesn't even cover all of it. I would call that a success. I did it! Seven days living the life of David Cookerman. I feel great for it as well. I feel my schedule has shifted. When I first started this, I was waking up at like 10 a.m. and going to sleep at like 
2 a.m. or something like this. Um, so it took a moment <laughs> to adapt, but now that I'm there, I'm really seeing the benefits of just getting up and going. Something that I really miss during this is my morning practice in terms of my actual spiritual practice and my slow mornings and having some time to myself um, and doing my household things. So I'm looking forward to getting that back, but I really, really see the benefit of just getting up, showing up and playing. And I think something that I'm gonna incorporate into my regular routine is as soon as I arrive at the studio, having an hour at least to just play because I really, really, really enjoyed this. The rest of it towards the end of the week started to feel a little bit like a chore, <laughs> but still as I was seeing my progress, it was really exciting and I wanted to keep going and I knew that there was an end point. So that really helped, but I'm so enthusiastic about this that I wanna carry on for another week. I don't wanna do it in exactly the same way. I'm gonna do Cookman Light. <laughs> I'm gonna do a really chilled out version of David's schedule because I think it will really benefit me. So turning up again at the same time every day, doing an hour and then seeing how I go. Not being too strict about it, but still continuing that regular practice just to really get it ingrained in my normal routine because I think it will be really good for me. Um, so thank you, David, for helping me out with this. And let me know in the comments who you want to see next. Whose routine should I try to copy next time? Um, I think it will be a fun challenge to keep going with. Um, but for now, let's see how this next week goes. Um, the amiated version of Cookerman's schedule. <laughs> For all the enthusiasm and as excited as I was, it turned out that in order to maintain a routine, you really do need to have a level of discipline that I seem to be lacking. Turning up and doing it anyway when I really don't feel like it is much harder to do when I'm not being held accountable by someone or something else. And so knowing I had to turn up for the stream and for the video kept me going in that first week. But this week, because I decided to go easy on myself, I ended up completely taking advantage of that and lost the routine altogether. So that didn't work. But while we're here, let's celebrate some wins. One of my main fills I was working on, I managed to increase the speed from 120 beats per minute to 180 beats per minute in just the first four days. Every morning I was feeling much looser and my playing was getting so much cleaner. Every groove I learned, it became easier and quicker each time I picked up the next one. My left hand trills went from basically non-existent to actually feeling quite comfortable and feeling like I was beginning to catch up with my right hand, which is a never ending task, I know, <laughs> um, but I was really getting there with it. I learned from this system of isolated practice, then contextualized practice, then improvisation, that the first part that I usually skip is probably the most important or is super super important for maintaining my playing ability never mind improving but actually maintaining um, the skills that I've got yes I improved my speed I learned new roles um, I cleaned up a lot of my technique um, but the best thing about it was that by the time I got around to improvising everything felt so smooth I was finding melody so naturally um, it felt completely effortless because I was so in the flow all week that my body just knew what to do um, and I could be creative without hindrance. So my biggest lesson from all of this is don't skip isolated practice. Isolated practice, contextualized practice, creativity, improvisation, composition, all the rest of it. I really like that framework. Here's the tutorial that I made during the filming of this experiment. Thank you so much, David, for setting me off on this journey. Um, and to everybody watching, please let me know whose schedule you would like to see next. If you're able, please do come and support me on Patreon so that I can keep doing videos like this. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, um, and it's thanks to my patrons that I'm able to spend any of that time doing any of these things. Um, so it would be amazing if you would consider supporting me there. Otherwise, I will see you somewhere else on the internet, maybe in the next video, um, and I wish you a beautiful week. <laughs>